something has gone seriously wrong in the world of private equity. In recent days, Blackstone, a giant of the private equity world, has pulled two of its IPOs, Merlin and Travelport, and Apex, another behemoth of private equity, pulled its IPO for new look. What's going wrong? Well, that's a question I put to one of the giants of the private equity world in academia, Guy Fraser Sampson. I think what's going on is there's much more volatility in public equity markets than was hoped would be the case when these IPOs were planned. There's actually something in America called the VIX, which is an index of volatility on public markets. It's colloquially known as the fear index. And basically when it's high, that's a bad time to be trying to get an IPO away because it's very difficult to price it. And that, I think, is what has happened. Although it's interesting, there are some potentially more disturbing things, if you believe what you read in the press, which is that some quoted equity investors are now actually nervous of the valuations that might be put on private equity-backed IPOs. So that could be something to look for in the longer term. This suggests that the funds have realized, maybe, that they're not going to realize the sorts of returns that justify their investments. That's absolutely right. What we have to bear in mind about private equity returns is that they are long-term and they are cash flow driven. So put very simply, that means the longer you hold a company, the more difficult it is to make a decent return. Now, if you go back 10 years to 1998 and 99, when private equity backed companies were being floated then, they were going out on average at just over three years from their first funding round. So the, they only stayed in private equity funds on average for three years. If you fast forward 10 years, that average is already up over seven years. And bear in mind, that's just the companies that have exited, which suggests that those that are still in the portfolios may be considerably older than that. And that makes a massive difference. It makes a massive difference, as you say. For example, if you want to generate a transaction IRR of 30%, which is what the private equity people have to target before they start taking off things like fees and carried interest. An average interest rate on your investment. A compound return, exactly. To do that over three years, you only need to do 2.25 times your money. To do it over seven years, believe it or not, you need to do over seven times your money. And even in the glory days of private equity back in the 90s, nobody was doing anything like seven times their money. So as you say, I think investors have to get used, at least in the short to medium term, from much lower returns from private equity. This surely means a major change in the way that the private equity funds are doing business. I mean, is there any sign that the private equity funds, the mega funds particularly, are going to change the way they operate? The mega funds, yes. And in fact, I think they're being quite open about it. Uh, within the last week or so, we've had the big annual private equity conference in Germany, Super Return. And you've had people like Leon Black of Apollo saying that the big public to private buyout market, in his words, is as dead as a dodo. And that Apollo are moving away from buyouts and will be focusing much more on things like commodities and real estate. We've had Henry Kravis of KKR, really the granddaddy of the whole LBO business, saying that, again, in his words, the buyout industry must adapt or die, adapt or become irrelevant. That buyouts will be smaller, they'll have much less debt, and that in future KKR might even be looking at doing things like minority stake deals. And by the way, KKR have just raised an infrastructure fund. So again, that gives you, I think, a pretty good steer of where they think the next hot area is going to be. It's not mega buyout. Private equity module, the private equity fund module that you do at CAS Business School, it's the only one at any major business school in the world. Why is that? I, well, it's a very good question. I think there are two reasons. The first one is, as far as I'm aware, I'm the only person who's been a leading fund investor who then has gone on to do academic work. But the other thing is, I think that people find what happens at the company level, whether in venture capital or buyout, somehow much sexier, much more exciting than what happens at the fund level. But that masks the fact that across the world, there are many more people whose business is investing in private equity funds, what we call LPs, limited partners, then there are people who do the company level investing. And I think if you're looking at private equity within the overall investment framework, which I think you should do across all asset classes, then it's absolutely essential that you should understand how private equity funds work. And that's what we do in the course of CAS. And I understand your book is now on the shelves at all the major business schools around the world. I understand so, yes. I've certainly seen it on the Harvard website, and it's been adopted, I think, as the standard textbook for most private equity modules. Guy Fraser Sampson, thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, there is now a Cast Talks blog, the address alexritson.com.